We now have an official statement from NVIDIA confirming the missing ROPs on the 5090s, as well as saying the issue affects some 5070 Ti's. They have uh, numbers of how much of a performance impact it has because it does have one. They have uh, percentages of how many units are affected. I'll tell you how you can identify the issue. Uh, but this is just one of a string of bad news sorts of days we've had for NVIDIA because we have another 5090 catching on fire, but this one's not the cable. Uh, this is uh, even causing damage to the motherboard as well. And I've got a follow up to uh, the uh, 50 series running old PhysX 32 bit games badly, and it's the return of the PhysX GPU because your 50 series GPU can't do the job itself. A little bit frustrating. We also have some AMD news for you as well, but let's circle around to the breaking news regarding the 5090 and 5070 Ti missing ROPs. Uh, so here is the uh, direct quote to The Verge. Again, all my sources in the video description from NVIDIA GeForce Global PR director. He says, we have identified a rare issue affecting less than 0.5%, that is half a percent, or in other words, one out of every 200 GPUs. Um, for the 5090, 5090D, and 5070 Ti GPUs, which have one fewer ROP than specified. The average graphical performance impact is 4%. Now, this is all super interesting so far because, first of all, all the reports I saw were about 5090s. People were identifying this issue on their 5090s. I hadn't heard anybody reporting an issue on their 5070 Ti, but he is getting ahead of that news and confirming that's an issue. I'll tell you in a minute how you can tell whether yours is affected if you have one. Now, also independent testing of the affected units had shown a performance impact. NVIDIA is confirming that there's a performance impact, saying it's Average is 4%. Of course, an average is going to, uh, you know, be hiding that there's a range. So some games could definitely be impacted more than 4%. Others probably less, saying the average impact is 4%. Saying there's no impact on AI or compute workloads, and affected consumers can contact the board manufacturer for a replacement. The production anomaly has been corrected. So basically confirming there was a production issue leading to this problem, and yes, it does impact gaming performance. Um, now, they're saying that they should, uh, customers should contact board manufacturers for a replacement. So a board manufacturer, that means like if you bought an Asus card, you contact Asus. If you bought an MSI card, you contact MSI. If you bought a Gigabyte card, you contact them, etc. That means you're gonna get stuck in their customer service pipeline. Now, because NVIDIA is aware of this, I'm sure they're in contact with board manufacturers and gonna make sure that this gets honored. If they don't, that's a disaster. I'm sure, I'm sure they're gonna make sure this gets honored. But this puts consumers, I think, in, a, uh, in, in an awkward position because you probably just spent a ridiculous amount of money if you bought one of these GPUs, and they've been hard to get a hold of. Stock is bad, so if you get into this RMA process, how long is it gonna take you to get a replacement? And if they just offer you an MSRP refund, well, a lot of these cards on the actual market, if you wanted to replace it, are now selling above MSRP. So this puts users in, I think, a difficult position where you have to kind of decide, well, you know, it's a 4% impact, do I bother with this return? And that's an awful position to be in because you should get what you paid for and what was advertised, and that is not what you got, and this is completely down to a production issue. Uh, and so there's two levels where this should have been caught. It, NVIDIA is the one shipping out the GPUs with this problem. So this should have been identified by them and not been shipped out in the first place. However, this then ar arrived at board manufacturers, you know, Asus, Gigabyte, Zotac, et cetera, all of them. And again, somehow within their process, this wasn't caught either. This was caught by people loading up GPU-Z, looking at their uh, ROPs, and noticing it's not what it should be. Which, by the way, is how you can identify if you had this issue. So, if you have a 5090 or a 5070 Ti, you should download GPU-Z. I will have, again, all my sources, including this, in the video description. And make sure you get it from Tech Power Up itself, rather than any kind of weird download sites. Uh, anyway, uh, so download this, and then you just check the, uh, check the ROPs. Now, what should they be? Well, actually, in the Reddit post where I first noticed uh, this response from NVIDIA, uh, so I'll just link this, uh, they also have a helpful uh, uh, note on how to identify this. Also, some clarification on NVIDIA's statement, because they say, one fewer ROP than specified. However, in the reports we saw, people said the 5090s were missing eight. 
That's just a little bit of a terminology issue, and there's a good explanation of it here, so I'll just read that. In the response above, NVIDIA mentioned one fewer ROP. In this case, they're referring to the raster operation partition. One raster operation partition contains eight missing ROP units, and the ROP units are what's being reported to GPU-Z. So if GPU-Z reports eight less than you should have, that's what's going on here. Now, you need to know how many you should have to be able to identify if you have this issue. So if you have a 5090, GPU-Z should report 176, but if you have this problem, it will report 168. Uh, if you have a 5070 Ti, you should have 96. I just tested mine, and I confirmed mine has 96. So my benchmarking wasn't 4% lower than it should have been or anything. Um, now, again, these should come in groups of eight. So if you have this problem, yours should say 88. However, again, uh, all the issues we saw being reported yesterday were people with 5090s. So I haven't actually seen users reporting the 5070 Ti. So if you have a 5070 Ti, check it. If it says 88 ROPs, you have this problem, and now you need to figure out uh, uh, you know, what to do. Again, you go through the warranty process, and for those of you who maybe bought this on the like scalper market, um, uh, I guess you might be living with your 4% uh, worst performance, but also caution. I'm wondering how many people who bought these with these issues are now going to sell them on the uh, you know, third-party market in order to recoup their costs and maybe make a profit because of the, the scalper pricing um, to, to dump these rather than waiting for the warranty process. So I'm, I'm just going to caution you guys to be careful if you're looking at buying a third-party 5090 or 5070 Ti because I wonder how many affected units are going to try to get dumped this way. Anyway, that's just all sorts of problems related to this, but it's not the only problem we're reporting on today. Uh, we're seeing on our NVIDIA that impossible weight 485s, 5090 Astral has caught on fire, and no, it's not the connector. He says, I was playing PC games this afternoon, and when I was done with the games, my PC suddenly shut down while I was browsing websites. When I restarted the PC, the GPU caught on fire, and smoke started coming out. When I took out the GPU, I saw burn marks on both the GPU and the motherboard. Uh, we have some images to look at here, so it's looking like you can see where the uh, fire-related damage was around the capacitor here. Again, it's not the connector, and he did upload sh uh, shots of the connector showing that the, the connector's pristine. On, on. Uh, but look, this was so hot, it, this actually caused damage to the motherboard, so there was some actual fire happening here. Um, anyway, some more shots of the GPU. Now, thoughts on this in the larger grand scheme of things would be if this is the only one that is affected by this, then, I mean, sucks for this guy, but, uh, you know, maybe it's not a sign of a larger issue. But we should kind of keep our eye on if we see any other 5090s, especially if it's the same product. Because if there's a capacitor on this board, then maybe uh, are there any other 5090 Astrals that have a similar issue? Again, is this just pointing to other quality control issues with this whole production line? Again, getting these missing ROPs, now we're seeing this, we're, nobody's catching this before it comes out. I don't know, guys. It just generally is adding to the overall negativity around this launch, along with the low supply, um, you know, uh, uh, not a huge generational up uplift anyway. And again, one of the other issues, and this is a follow-up on, uh, putting a, a, a more of a sour taste in people's mouth with the 50 series launch is the fact that the 32-bit CUDA support is deprecated. NVIDIA has confirmed this is expected behavior. This is intentional. Uh, but what that means is if you're playing games that have an older PhysX implementation, uh, specifically a 32-bit implementation, your 50 series card now can't do the GPU acceleration for the PhysX, so the game falls back to the CPU. Unless you bring back the old school PhysX GPU. So, a little follow up here on a Redditor uh, at our hardware. Again, all, all sources will be in the video description. Who has bought an RTX 3050 to help out his 5090? Because the 3050 can do some things a 5090 can't, like GPU accelerate 32 bit PhysX. <laughs> um, so, anyway, there's the shot of the setup, which uh, there you go. Uh, and here's some performance screenshots. So this 
uh, is the 5090 trying to run a benchmark and averaging about uh, 61 FPS with minimums down as low as 6, 1% lows down as low as 29. What happens when you pop in an RTX 3050 to support the PhysX? Uh, well, we're now jumping up to 390 FPS average and 1% uh, lows of 139. So it is a significantly uh, better experience when you have the GPU accelerated PhysX. Now to be clear, you could of course just not use those PhysX uh, uh, features and everything like that, but it's kind of a shame to lose that support. And some of these are, are popular old titles. Uh, if we want some more details on the testing here, which looks to be of high quality, uh, we can read this uh, saying that uh, Mafia 2 Classic results were benchmark run with the 3050 and max settings tw uh, was averaging 28.8 FPS. But with the 3050 and max settings, 157.1 FPS. So a massive difference there. Batman Arkham Asylum results without the 3050 supporting PhysX, 61 FPS at max settings, but with many scenes into the low 30s and 40s. Again, running on a 5090. But the benchmark run with the 3050 at max settings went to 390 FPS. Borderlands 2 results saying one minute gameplay run in area with heavy PhysX without the 3050 and max settings could not enable PhysX at all. I tried everything, including different legacy versions of PhysX and editing any files to no avail. One a minute gameplay run in area with heavy PhysX with the 3050 and max settings, 122 FPS. And no screenshot for that one since it's not a benchmark run, etc. Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag results. Playthrough of intro with 3050 at max settings, 62 FPS, engine locked. Playthrough of intro with the 3050 at max settings, also 62 FPS because engine locked. It seemed PhysX wasn't dragging this title down when using the CPU for PhysX. I saw the effects working as pieces of the ship were splintering off into the air as it was being hit by cannonballs. Anyway, some other notes about trying to use the 3050 as a dedicated PhysX card for 64-bit PhysX games and saying that it seems like games are ignoring the control panel settings and just throwing PhysX load onto the 5090 anyway, trying it in several games to make that work. Anyway, pretty cool testing here. Again, sources uh, source in the video description, but I knew a lot of people wanted some follow-up with actual testing on running a PhysX card, uh, using like a cheaper card to run as a PhysX support. Again, kind of a downside that you buy a 5090 and it can't run your old games as well as an older GPU, so now you have to buy another one of those or keep your old one to support it if you do play those older titles. Again, I need to be 100% clear, not every old game is gonna have this issue, and even in those old games, you could just not use those PhysX features, but it's a shame to be missing them. Anyway, um, last piece of GPU news I've got for you guys today is AMD Navi 48 RDNA GPU has 53.9 billion transistors, more than NVIDIA GB203. This is coming from a videocards.com article. And uh, they are getting their information from a leak from Tieba Baidu, um, uh, where it uh, says, I could shrink down out of the way here, uh, according to the personal test of a person who has the most profound hardware knowledge in this forum, I think there's some machine learning translation going on here, guys. Uh, it is about 350 square millimeters, which is similar to the result of strict measurement and calculation by someone in the Anon Tech forum based on official photos. After the ray tracing unit and the new AI unit are stuffed in, the area is still within this range. I think there is nothing to complain about. The cost will not be inferior to the 5070 Ti and 4080. If it is 380 or even 400, as mentioned before, it will explode. Okay, so here is some context for this provided by the videocards.com article here. AMD Navi 31, RDNA 3, 529 square millimeters. NVIDIA AD103, 379 square millimeters. NVIDIA GB203, Blackwell at 378 square millimeters. AMD Navi 48, which is our RDNA 4 9070XT uh, GPU here at 350 square millimeters, which is similar in size to the AMD Navi 32 RDNA 3 at 346 square millimeters. Um, if you want to look at this along with like transistor density and all of that, we can see it stacked up in this chart. Now, um, you know, what does any of this mean? <laughs> Honestly, it's just kind of interesting for the end user. 
Uh, one thing that's important is how dye area is being used in term, because that affects uh, manufacturing costs. And manufacturing costs affect what kind of pricing AMD can set and still have certain profit margins. So the more area efficient it is, the less it costs generally, and then the more aggressive their pricing can be while still operating within whatever margins they are looking for. Uh, so there we go. I will continue to report on any interesting uh, leaks, news, rumors, all of that. And I hope all of you have an excellent day, uh, despite the kind of bad news on the 50 series here.